Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. In the previous episode, we escaped the Fade, made our way to the top of the tower, and finally put an end to Aldred, allowing us to finally leave this tower. Now, I know I said we'd be back at the party camp, but I kind of did a bit of testing, so to speak, to make sure we didn't run into any random encounter, and we didn't, but I did get ambushed by Sten as soon as we got back to camp. So, that's why we're starting here in the tower instead of in camp. And I will warn you, a lot of this episode is going to be speaking Light, with our companions. How will you end it? Oh, I thought we'd just ask the Darkspawn to please leave. If you hope to slay the Archdemon with wit, you may want to arm yourself first. You say you are a Grey Warden. I have heard stories of this order. Hmm. Savage. Uh-huh. And what have you heard? Great strategists and peerless warriors. That is what we hear of the Wardens. So far, I am not impressed. I'm not here to impress you. Evidently not. It remains only to see what you are here for. Well, that's one thing Sten is good at. Being savage. Anyways, we are going to first and foremost distribute the gifts. You can see we have a Emissary Pether. Basically, as you gather the allies from the contracts, you're going to have people showing up in your camp that you can, well, donate supplies to. But anyways, that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is to give away gifts. First and foremost, the Black Grimoire. This is a very, very important gift that you, I'm assuming, need in order to get certain endings. This one goes to Morgan and no one else. It even says in the description, Morgan would want to take a look at this. What? You found Flemeth's grimoire? Ever since we discovered the condition of the Mage's Tower, I had wondered if it might be recoverable. But I had yet to speak of it to you. How fortunate that you found it on your own. You have my thanks. I will begin study of the tome immediately. So, what do you hope to find within it? Secrets. My mother has many of them, and this tome represents the one time that they were able to get away from her. I do not intend to squander this opportunity to learn more than Flemeth wished me to know. This should be... interesting. Yeah, if you need to get... if you want to get certain endings, you will need to give that to... to, uh, Morrigan. Okay then, small gold bar, that is for a companion we don't have. Same goes for the remarkable Malachites, the Golden Scythe 490 Black. Oh wait, that's someone we got somewhere else. Again, companion we don't have. Same goes for the Sun Blonde Vint. However, the Silver Chain. That one also goes to Morrigan. A fine gift. You have my thanks. See, the Water Stained Portrait goes to... Sten. I am impressed. My thanks. See, another ten and I'll be able to go on a quest, or get his companion quest. But until then, I'm just gonna have to keep giving gifts. Uh, let's see, only thing left, because I already gave away all the other gifts to the companions that were in my party, is the beef bone for Rex. Well, not that it really matters, because his approval is already at max. So, technically speaking, I could have given that to somebody else, but, oh well. I also took care of emptying out my supplies, but as you can see, it didn't do much for me. Yikes. Well, first and foremost, may as well talk to our newest companion, Wynn. Oh, it's been a long day. Rest. Rest would be welcome. Are you alright? Yes, yes, of course. I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. Yeah, it is a little hard to miss. Ha, huh, very funny. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time. But there is always something else to do. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. Hey, don't say things like that. We still need you. Oh, no. I'm not the sort of person that leaves things unfinished. I'll see this through, I promise. 
Have you encountered many abominations apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Eh, no, the ones in the tower were the first I've ever seen. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. You're a great mage. You'd never become an abomination. <clears throat> abomination. Every mage is vulnerable, no matter how accomplished or powerful. That is the first thing we learn. And overconfidence can lead to recklessness. One slip. All it takes is one slip. And everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back. Or at least that's what they say. I mean, the same could be said of anybody. One little slip and you descend down into madness. You have doubts? Of late, I have begun to wonder if... If there is any way an abomination can be... Cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their humanity. If one retains one's humanity, one is not an abomination. Yes, it is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Uh, you're welcome, though that wasn't entirely my intention. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What was life like in the Chantry Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Yeah, they tend to be self-righteous. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world. They treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. And what did you say to them? What can I say to them? What they believe is what the Chantry says, and the Chantry is infallible, yes? Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Very well. Alastair, you got anything to say? You were once a Templar. Something on your mind? Nope. Yes. Nope. As you wish. And I doubt Morgan has anything to say. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. So, what's your story, exactly? Well, if you're really interested, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately frostback mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. So why did you leave? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Uh, did you steal them? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The Lost Tigs. 
They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. I see. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. And now here you are. Yes, here I am. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Eh, uh, heard any rumors? The dark spawn have attacked Lothering. I don't think everyone even had fled by the time they came either. Word has it they swarmed the entire area, making off with prisoners and burning down the buildings. And then they were gone. Just as quick. I wonder if there's anyone left. I heard some chanters were going to head down south, maybe to try to find some survivors. I'm not holding out hope myself. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Mm. I'm sure yeah. you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. That's why you want to complete everything that you can in Lothering the first time you go through. Because... I believe once you complete one of the quests in, uh, in, uh, well, one of the main quests, Lothering will be attacked and burned down. And if you have not recruited Sten or Liliana or done any of the other stuff, you won't get a second chance. Let's see. Golden Silverite, slow. Hmm. No, no paralysis. Oh, well, I'll just take the poultices and the injury kits. Well, I will admit, the talking didn't take up as much time as I thought it did, so you know what? I think it's time we headed for Redcliffe once I've talked to the emissary here. The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do the Templars of the Chantry. Do you need anything? There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. The most useful for my talents are runes. Mm, kind of regret selling them off, because you can yes. donate stuff here. But only if you have it. Like, gemstones of mid to high value can be donated, but only once you've gotten the dwarves recruited. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Don't listen to Alistair. He's full of rubbish. Hey! Alright, now we're on our way to... <clears throat> Redcliffe. Indeed. Yes. Yes. See, da, 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 da. Yeah. Completely crossed out. Cannot even go there. So let's head to Redcliffe Village in that case. Uh, the golden ones indicate basically special DLC stuff. Just letting you know off the ha off the day. Ooh, random encounter. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a, a solution, with your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. 
An assassin. Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done. Was that a hint of regret I saw in his eyes? Somehow I doubt it. Oh look! Darkspawn for the first time in a long time. Left is to get the rangers up top and these guys over here. Uh, hey, Alistair, could use some help here. I guess they had to throw a battle in at some point. Still, though, death route over there and some looting to be had. Going. Hmm. Kind of expected more from the uh, darkspawn leader than just a bit of silver. But can I truly complain? Take the armor. If nothing else, I can sell it all for some gold. <clears throat> Which reminds me, I have completely forgotten to put some equipment on win. Cinderfell Gauntlets, Enchanter's Footing. Uh, oh, right, I wanted to give her the Libertarian's Cowl, because the extra mana regeneration is going to be nice. There's probably some other stuff, but nee. As you say. So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? Short story, I met Duncan and, Duncan and he liked me. Ah, you are keeping this tale to yourself, I see. Fair enough. Forgive me for prying. Well, I suppose I could tell you. By the way, this is not intentional, but I'm going through with it anyway. I am interested to hear. Duncan took me from the alienage and saved me from prison. Ah, I see. Do you mind if I ask what you did? I killed the Arl's son for hurting my friends and family. Oh, I... I'm sorry. I should not have brought it up. It must be an unhappy memory. Bastard deserved it. I'd kill him all over again if I could. You say that with such cold satisfaction that it frightens me. But I can see no fault in your actions. I would have done the same. It sickens and saddens me to hear what men in power inflict on those who they ought to serve and protect. I have heard stories that some Templars who hunt Maleficarum do not end the hunt with a clean death, that they subject the victim to countless abuses and indignities before they finish it. But this is just a rumor. Regardless of what happened in your past, I am glad you found a place with the Wardens, as I'm sure you are too. I just hope I can show the strength Duncan saw in me. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. 
Perhaps it was meant to be. Okay then, not what I intended to do, because I just wanted to loot the body for an acid flask that I'm never going to use and grab the death root. Now then, can we please get out of here? If I could just find the exit for this place. Going. When? Oh, I fell. Fell? You passed out. You all right? For a moment there, I thought I was... I thought it was all over. You need rest, that's all. I... I will explain everything when we are back at camp. Now is not the time. Uh, seems like we're yes. still not getting to Redcliffe today. Well, actually no, maybe we are. Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I, um, should probably have told you earlier. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna like this, am I? I don't know. I doubt it. I've never liked it, that's for sure. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon, exactly? Uh, I think you said he raised you? I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle, and she died when I was born. Arl Eamon took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marrick, which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. So you're not just a bastard, but a royal bastard. Ha! Yes, I guess it does it, that. I should use that line more often. I, I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Well, he still should have told me. Mm, no, wait, does Loghain know? Why wouldn't he? He was King Marek's best friend. I don't know if that means anything, though. I certainly never considered the idea that it might ever be important. Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Hmm. And did she know the truth about you? She may have, but I think it's more likely that she feared the rumors might be true. I can't blame her for that. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall, and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been the way I acted. But maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Isle is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. At your command, my prince. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. Yes, yes you are.
Yep. He is, well, for all intents and purposes, the rightful heir to the throne. Now, I should warn you about this right now. Once you enter Redcliffe Village, you're not going to be able to leave. Otherwise, the place gets destroyed, and we don't want that happening. For I reasons you'll find out. I thought coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? <clears throat> what do you mean? Is there a problem? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? I've heard Arleman is sick, if that's what you mean. He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I... I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother. He's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. Yeah, get used to it. Everywhere we go is going to be in danger. And we got to save them. It's Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the R. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. You don't believe Loghain's lies? What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the king. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days, no guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Hmm, what evil things are you talking about? Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come, with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. Now, if you do accept their help, you will gain approval from Alistair, Leliana, Wynne, and one other companion member we don't have. But you will lose, uh, lose approval with Morgan, who doesn't want to get involved. And Sten will argue that it's pointless. But, with enough persuasion, you can get approval from Sten. Also, Liliana... Er, uh, not Lilia. If you refuse to help, then Morgan will gain approval, Sten will gain approval, you'll basically get reversal. Liliana, you can't actually convince that you're doing all you can in order to get approval. But, of course, I'm gonna stay here and help. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. 
Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Alright, I want to discuss, discuss the situation with you. Of course. Isn't the timing of this awfully convenient? Are you suggesting what's happened here is related to Kaelin's death and the Civil War, even Eamon's illness? I mean, isn't Arl Eamon an heir to the throne? Our sister was Kaelin's mother. I suppose we've royal blood, but it's a shaky claim to the throne, though still better than Loghain's. And it does mean Eamon could intervene in Loghain's bid for the throne, but let's not leap to conclusions. I would not like to think that anyone would wish this on my brother. He is a good man and much loved by the people of Redcliffe. And I can't imagine how terrible it must be for our lesser Isolde, and especially Connor. I would not want him to lose his father at such a young age. Mm -hmm. Why are you in the Chantry with the villagers? Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. Hmm. Won't that look cowardly? I'm not here for glory. I would prefer being outside, but Perth has a point. We could bring some men in to stand beside me, but I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers if possible. Hmm. So what happens after this battle is over? Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. You have some of Eamon's knights here? I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? Their search for the urn of sacred ashes. Yes, I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Hmm. What exactly are these things that attack the village? I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses. Men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the gravest injuries. Undead, perhaps. Spirits possessing the bodies of the dead. We could be dealing with a mage, but who would do such a thing? Hmm. I should get back to work. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Yep, looks like if we want to get into that castle, we need to, well, help this village and defend it. There are some side quests to do in here and a bunch of stuff we're going to need to do to prepare for the coming attack. But like I said, once you have entered the village, there is no leaving it without letting the village get destroyed. So we are going to be here for a while. As is going to be the case with most places we visit. But anyways, I am going to end it off here for today. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw pulling to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.